The economic situation of your country can make or break your financial decisions. An era of uncertainty can make the process of buying your car or your dream house more stressful than it is. Speaking of which, let's have a look at what the U.S. economy is brewing for home buyers. After March 2020, nearly every business sector experienced a boom. Massive demands drove prices, profits, and revenues. However, the tides began to turn in mid-2022, and economists were speculating a recession. The economic instability became more and more apparent with every new headline. The year 2023 is more than halfway over, and the economy seems to be slowly rolling forward. The government debt that stood at $9 trillion in 2008 stands at $31.4 trillion as of June 2023. This 250% increase within 15 years has juiced the economy in multiple ways, exposing several vulnerable markets. Of course, one of them is the real estate market. President Biden suspended the U.S. debt ceiling, averting what would have been a first-ever default with just two days to spare. As a result, the fears of a complete meltdown might have gone away, but there is still a lot in the housing market that would not go away, even as we head toward the end of the year. I will reveal them as we move along, so stick around. Please support our channel with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The numbers never deceive. Most residential properties are purchased with a mortgage, and an analysis of the number of mortgage applications can provide insight into the housing market trends. As a result, the Mortgage Bankers of America have compiled years' worth of such data into an index format. According to them, the last peak occurred in January 2021, and the graph has dropped to 54% since then. Today, it stands well below what was considered normal in the pre-pandemic days. Even if you look at the bigger picture, the numbers are much less than the lows we witnessed after the 2008 crash. Given the math, one thing is obvious. The active side of the market is nearly frozen. After record highs, the market is experiencing all-time lows. Buyers are nowhere in sight. The few transactions that are happening are extremely competitive because at the same time, the inventory situation is also not so promising. Housing prices have experienced a spike since the last week of May. If you check the market situation, you will see the houses being sold at prices 30, 40, and even 50% higher than the previous years. But this is a seasonality peak for the prices. Last year, the market strengthened exactly around this time before beginning to decline as the winter approached. The trends provided by Case-Shiller Index for this year until now are no different than the previous year. So we can expect the same pattern ahead as well. The only difference is there will be other factors at play contributing to the decline this time. There is no denying that tough times await our economy. The companies have engaged in mass layoffs following bad earnings, slowing sales, and falling growth. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve Bank continues to raise fund rates beyond market expectations. The federal fund's overnight rate stands at 5.5% today. You might be wondering how this matters. Although government borrowing does not impact real estate, it widely determines interest rates. The impact then trickles out to the rest of the economy, indirectly creating ripples in the housing market. According to real estate economists, the Federal Reserve is not done raising yet. The interest rates reaching an 8% marker would not be a surprise. Considering the swirling rumors, you can expect mortgage rates to hike accordingly. What happens if the rates continue to climb? The University of Michigan has used statistics to indicate perceived buying conditions, consumer sentiment, and expectations toward the housing market and people's willingness to engage in real estate trade since the 1960s. The survey has indicated a slight rise from the record lows in recent years, but if the interest rates continue to move up, a new record of all-time lows will be inevitable. The story does not end there. Boom and bust are a part of every game. The higher the Fed pushes, the harder the fall becomes. It is an undeniable fact that regression to the mean must occur. Let's put this into perspective. This summer brings us to record high interest rates, elevated mortgage prices, record slow market activity, and all-time low consumer sentiment. Above all, the Federal Reserve is on a mission to curb inflation before it spikes up, so you can expect the sales to soften even further. Besides, high interest rates can exacerbate the housing shortage, stopping existing owners from selling. 
Consequently, the inventory conditions will also experience declines. The last time the market looked this murky was from 2005 to 2007, but what we experienced after the plunge of 2008 has been unlike any other era in economic history. It was an era held up by loose money policy. People had gotten used to operating in the market where money was essentially free. In contrast to today, prices were allowed to skyrocket without any downward forces to counteract them. You can envision interest rates as gravity acting on housing prices. From the summer of 2009 to April of 2022, the 30-year mortgage rate never rose above 5%. That counts as more than 10 years of zero gravity and interference. The low rate era might have changed the psychology of people in the market, but the market was not always like that. In fact, a zero gravity world was unimaginable for decades. Take a look back in history you will see that there were times when a 7% mortgage rate was considered the ideal rate of the decade. In 1982, it reached a record of 18.5%. During much of the 1970s to 1991, the mortgage rates stayed in two digits mostly and never fell below 9%. To look at these data charts, indicators, and indexes, rich in numbers from top to bottom, and denying the probability of regression means denying years worth of math. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is the definitive future scenario. However, grasping how interest rate fluctuations impact the market where people have become accustomed to ultra-low mortgage rates is crucial to understand why there is a need for a shift in the ongoing pattern of constant price growth. In addition to the all-time high interest rates, another factor that might aggravate profit found effects on overall consumer spending in the near term is student loans. The proposal put forward by Republicans has repealed various relief programs. The student debt payments that the government had paused after the events of 2020 have to resume in the fall. The problem now is that borrowers are not ready to repay, as most of them are working-age Americans earning average wages. According to Forbes sources, the average student loan payment is between $200 and $400. According to the Balance's recent survey, over half of Americans have a surplus of only $250 each month. Consequently, it's logical that for many students, the money remaining at the end of the month is insufficient to cover the student debt payments. People are barely getting by, and those who are unable to save are already using credit to plunge the gap. Without a doubt, the repayments are resuming at a terrible time, regardless of what people have to say about the stocks and economic health. Students at graduate and postgraduate levels are indebted to even more amounts, about $1,200 on average. Anything in that range would eclipse an average person's spending, whether on necessities or leisure. Thus, it is hard to imagine that this decision cannot impact our economic progress. The consequences will show up in the economic data in the fall. Such a financial strain is likely to have ugly effects, making it hard for borrowers to save or make major life decisions, such as buying a home or starting a family. From here on, the overall trajectory of the housing market is not that hard to predict. The housing prices might look stable for now, but seasonality will start revealing its effects sooner than we know. While seasonal decline will take over the market in the fourth quarter of 2023, dark clouds of student debt payments will also worsen the situation. Not to forget, tight inventory and Federal Reserve rates will also contribute to the equation. You might see unemployment rise and investors and builders getting cold feet alike. At the beginning of 2024, we can expect the onset of a prolonged bear market marking the end of a decade-long era of remarkable and continuous growth in home prices. This period will likely witness a gradual recovery of the real estate market. Right now, it is advised for the buyers to go with the market's flow and not get sucked into deals that they cannot afford in the long run. If the market crashes, your property will lose its value. When faced with the financial challenges that a crash can bring, you may find it difficult to repay your loan and may be compelled to sell. As an investor, each decision you make should be the result of thoughtful consideration and mature reflection. Whatever happens, conduct a market analysis, seek expert advice, and do not rush into buying or selling your real estate property. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment below, and watch this one as well.